What's up? It's your boy Rampage Jackson. I'm here with the best co-host, Bear DeGidio. We're here. We got another amazing guest, but Rampage, before we go into this guest, we are having the biggest sale of the year, Jackson.com, up to 50% off site-wide, the best-selling chain stacks, our best-selling iced-out chains, sweat-proof, custom class, durable, made to be worn every day, and styles for everybody, from bracelets to chains. Make sure you guys go check out jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide right now. And don't forget, if you're looking for all the limited edition clothing, you can go to jacksonclub.com. You can use promo code YT15 for 15% off. And you can catch the shorts that we've been training in, the jackets, the eyewear, everything that the guests have been wearing. We appreciate everybody's support. Before we jump right into this podcast with this amazing guest, we just want to say thank you for everything you guys have been doing. Leave comments and make sure you guys tag us on Instagram if you've been picking up some pieces. What's up? This is your boy Rampage Jackson with Bear. We're here once again with the Jackson Podcast with a very special guest, one of my close friends and training partners. And we got the same manager. I love this guy's whole family. One, the Spaniard Archuleta. Yeah, what up, guys? What's what up, Bear? What, what up, Rampage? How you doing, man? Thanks Good, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> Well, I'm glad. I'm glad we finally got you on here because you you busy. You be all over the place in Japan. You be well. Do you be hanging out in Spain? Because you a Spain, you be hanging out over. Yeah, there? Because I went back to Spain. Uh, it was one of my dreams growing up. I was like, man, I always want to get back to Spain and see what it was like, like where we came from, or where my last name originated from. And I took my mom and dad, like gifted them a, a opportunity to go out there, set up a couple seminars, and we got to visit our own original hometown that was called Archibaleta, and it was in the Basque country of Spain. It Shut was up. You named that for your hometown. Yeah, yeah. Because we came with the Oñate tribe. To the, the what? Oñate. So okay. he was the one that basically sponsored the expedition. And what I learned while I was there was the Basque people were more of the workhorses. They did. They built the boats. They were the carpenters. They were basically the renegades. And that's why they had them because they would be like the handyman, so to speak, on the ships. And I learned this all while being out there. I was like, man, this is crazy. This, like, this is exactly who I am. Like, this is crazy this is fits like my characteristics of who i am family man love to eat love to work lo you know we're just workhorses and it showed me the other side of my family so. did you meet anybody that looked like you out there <laughs> yeah a lot of people actually crazy right like uh so when i was going through spain i didn't really see people that looked like me i was like man this is strange like we don't really look like anyone but then when we got into the basque country i was like man like this is this is what i look like like this is crazy but there was only two brothers that had the last name that carried to America. Mm -hmm. And at first I was a little nervous, right? You get a little nervous because you're going to your hometown of like where you originate from. And, you know, people were like, man, like you made it. Like your family made it. Good job. Like you're royalty. Like that's like better than royalty. You know, that means you got to meet with the people, cultivate with them, learn their culture, became them and just carried your last name on. And so we're super proud of you. We're proud that you're a fighter, you know, and they were just open arms. They sat me down, had some of the biggest feasts of my life out there. Some of the best Asturian beef, like uh, um, basically protein that I've, I've ever ate in my life. Me and my dad were just like, wow, you know, wow, that's great. The, the wine, amazing. That's like me going to Nigeria and meeting some black folks that look just like. <laughs> hey. you know, from Nigeria? Yeah, I'm, I'm mixed with Nigerian. What, what's your full nationality? I'm Irish, Nigerian, and native. I'm I'm slapper hole. Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm, actually anyone, huh? I'm actually Cherokee. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Are you save a hole or slap a hole? No, slap a hole. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, say, I ain't uh, saving yeah. no. I ain't saving no hole. <laughs> hell no. They don't want to be saved. You don't want to. No, no, hell no. no. <laughs> Are you saving holes? You, you, but you just you look like you would like to save save a few. I know. Listen, I know I'm ugly, and I know oh, I look like I got to pay. Yeah, yeah. I know I look like I got to pay. You play. You play the victim. Yeah. I ain't gotta pay. Yeah. Walk in here looking like Michael B. Jordan. You <laughs> right. wanna play the like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Jackson model now, y'all. Right. Got a nice beard. Looking jawline. younger than both yeah. of us put together. Like, come Draw on. I am younger than both of y'all put together. <laughs> I'm 15, right up here. Yeah. How, how old are you, on? I'm 36. Just turned yeah, 36. You look this young. Year. You, yeah. You still Thanks. fighting in the prime right now. Your your character and the, and the way you operate in and out of the ring is young and you're flavorful. You have a lot of personality. I feel like the the audiences really really appreciate that, especially. You being in multiple leagues right now. Yeah. Does fighting come from your family? I see you wearing some some pieces right here too. Yeah, man. I mean, basically, like like getting back into my ancestry, right? Like becoming a conquistador, like just 
conquerors, right? And then we got the Apache side of my family that was like uh, um, Chief Victorio, who was had the highest bounty on his head more than Geronimo because he used to rob stagecoaches and just like, and what he did with the gold, him and Geronimo, they would hide them under the mountains and things like that. But he would take the, the guns and the cannons and weaponize the Apache so they could fight back against the cavalry. And so it was just our heritage, you know, we were hunter gatherers and they just, my family, I, I'm one of seven. So my dad, you know, was six boys, one girl, my dad, like, you guys have way too much energy. We need to do something here. Right. So he didn't want to put us into boxing, which we all wanted to do, of course. Uh, so he did the next best thing, which was wrestling. And so we all grew up wrestling. I was basically born on the mat, so to speak, you know, and then I have my oldest brother that wrestled. They were just all stars. I always had big shoes to fill. Wow. How were you when you started wrestling? I crawled on the mat. I learned how to walk on the mat. So wow. my first tournament was, I think I was like three and wow. a half. Yeah. And you didn't get burnt out? No, nah, man. I loved it. Like, I was always wanted to please my dad because my brother is like, they they were burnt out, so to speak, right? And yeah. it's uh, it was hard for me to see that because they were so good and so talented. And they, I was a fat, burnt. chubby one. I, yeah. I was a 10-pound baby. I was the biggest baby wow. that my mom had. And I ended up being so the small. short. Yeah, I ended up being the smallest one. <laughs> so, you know, being, <clears throat> being in the family, we just consisting of wrestlers, you know, I, I always wanted to give my mom and dad the gift of being able to be a superstar, right? Be a guy that could put my dad in the sold out arena and perform in front of him and just be like, that's my son, you know? Yeah, that's good. It's, 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 it's an amazing feeling, obviously, to be an accomplished fighter. It's another feeling to be so successful and have multiple straps. You have one in Ryzen, you have one in Bellator. What are your thoughts on Bellator and PFL, this merger that just recently went down? Man, I'm excited, very excited. So my whole career, uh, I've won a championship in every league that I fought in, every promotion, uh, multiple weight classes, except there's one always that loomed over my head, and that was World Series of Fighting, beating the hell out of this guy, like dropping elbows and like just killing this guy. And uh, I was 5-0 and at the time. At the time, you're told, you make it 6-0, and 7-0, and you're going to go to UFC. So that was like my mindset, right, as a young adolescent fighter. And so ended up getting choked out in a triangle, so pissed, so devastated, because I wanted to be undefeated, right? You have that innocent mindset as a fighter. And uh, so why I say that is because that's the only organization, which is now, it's weird how things come in full circle because the World Series of Fighting is now PFL. And so that's the only organization that I never got the title for. So uh, now I have that opportunity. So I, I think it's written, you know, I think it's meant to be. So so, so you so you been in... Um Bellator, so you automatically on a contract with PFL now. Yeah, so they have to honor our contract. Well, that goes back into the strike force and the WEC and when Pride got taken. Uh, you have to, as a new company, honor those those contracts that you bought uh, that you bought out. But what the PFL could have did was wait till the end of the year and then said, all right, we're just going to pick and choose. But the UFC could have picked and choose as well because they would have went bankrupt, right? So... Now that he took the uh, adopted the organization and took us in, he has to honor our, our contracts. Will they allow you to keep fighting in Risen? Yeah, they have to. I think I, I I don't know if they have to, but I know I'm contracted with them. And then my first text was like, once they fully announced that they were sold, I said, "Hey, uh, excited to see you on New Year's for my fight." Just to like fish it out there and make sure I'm still fighting uh, for Horizon because I didn't know yet. I hadn't signed the contract. I haven't done anything. And then, uh, but I have the title, so like, and they've been promoting this Horizon, and so. Um, he told me, yeah, we're looking forward for you uh, fighting on New Year's, and uh, we're extremely happy for you. Go kill it, you know? Well, I hope you do get yeah. that PFL <clears throat> belt, man. It'd be dope. Have yeah. three belts. Yeah. yeah so P PFL, obviously, when it was World Series of Fighting, and it's like that bandway, that 135 division, mm -hmm. you going back, does that, like, because I'm a little confused on how they're going to do the belt structure. Like, does this belt mean anything? Like, does the Bellator belt transfer over to the PFL belts now, or do the PFL belts hold more weight than the Bellator belts? How's that going to work? So, from my understanding right now is Bellator is going to run as its own entity right now, oh, okay. but they're not going to perform in America. They're going to do European shows. 
so they'll have the bigger names right now. I think the first the first fight they have will be the uh, PFL champions versus the Bellator champions. And they only have six weight classes, so those six weight classes are going to fight. And I said, hey, uh, I text Don Davis. I said, hey, I'm in a strange predicament here because we have an opportunity to put three promotions into one. And you're talking about being a global martial arts promotion. What better way to do it than having me fight Patchy Mix since you don't already have a PFL 135 champion? Why don't I win them. I, I take care of business come New Year's Eve. And then you and let me and Patchy Mix fight because I'm the only guy to beat Patchy Mix. Of course, we see if that's Pat, what Patchy wants. Obviously, the champion gets to choose and pick who he wants to defend his belt against. But for me, it's the only thing that makes sense. I'm on a five fight. I'm going to be on a five fight win streak. He's on a six fight win streak. The guys that have been chirping and things like that, like obviously Stotts had stopped me. And so he's like, oh, I get next. Like, da da da. But, you know, it's like, Bro, you won one fight. Settle down against the guy you already beat, right? Like, you know, like I'm on a five fight win. I'm gonna, I'm on four fight win streak, and I have a world title. Like, this is way bigger than what you're. Why, why would he fight you, right? So, if you want to make it global and you want to make a, a precedence of letting fighters be able to do what fighters do, mm -hmm. let me fight Patchy Mix for the uh, PFL and Bellator title. You know, yeah, it's crazy. I think, uh, like Rampage, obviously, you you had the UFC strap. I mean, that's like at the time the only belt that mattered right but now you have so many leagues and organizations and all these belts matter now because the competition and the talent is at an all-time high right it's a different time area yeah, a different, different time area and and to just go off subject just way my mind think I, I i like rising's belt better than <laughs> and look at look at it i just like the way it look i always wonder i got the pride belt right yeah but when i beat dan henderson i remember lorenzo fatita gave me the belt but he gave it to me like and privately and stuff, but I could, and he, he kind of told me not to ever bring it out to a fight or anything. Wait, you talking about the physical belt? Or you mean the organization? I got the pride belt, but the UFC made it. Yeah. No, but I'm saying you you like the actual physical belt. I like the actual physical belt. It <laughs> yeah. looks better. It looks better than the better uh, the better to a belt looks better than the UFC belt. I'm yeah. keeping 100 for yeah. me. It looks better than the yeah. UFC belt, but the risen belt. What, what is it? You the champ? Rising or risen? Yeah. Risen, risen. I call it both. You risen? know. Yeah, risen. risen. Ri yeah, risen. It looks better than than the Bellator belt and the UFC belt put together. So I'm low key jealous a little bit. I kind of like want to come out uh, and fight and rise in at two o a heavyweight and get the, get a belt. Oh well, hold yeah. up, hold up. Yeah. You want to come back yeah. and fight? I want to come back and fight and and rise in and get, just to get the belt. Who who the, who, the, who the heavyweight champion they got out there? They don't. I, I don't believe they have a heavyweight champion right now. So I think you're you're in the mix for it. Yeah yeah yeah. Get, hey, tell them to give me a bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the well, they, they they got some good guys in that heavyweight, but no, no, nothing that you can't handle. Rampage, you you've proven it. That ring is your ring, bro. That's yeah. that's why I was so honored to win this because the the homage to pay to you because you you were one of my favorite fighters. Oh, you, thanks, bro. Dan Henderson, uh, Fedor, like all these guys that we got to grow up and watch, right? Like. We didn't get to watch you just UFC. Made me feel, you just made me feel old, though. No, nah, man. Like, you were you young at up. that time, bro. But you said you got to grow up. And I watch. got to grow up, and you got to stay the same age. <laughs> <laughs> but I came, to your, I came to your last fight out there yeah. at, at Risen, and I was very impressed because I know how much weight you had to cut. Yeah. And I knew that was going to be a tough fight for yeah. you, just cutting the weight. People don't understand how hard it is to cut weight and still go out there and perform uh, in a championship fight. Yeah, man. How did you? How did you? How did you pull that through? Does it get that belt? I, would, I know you was tired. I know you was like yeah. drained, basically. Man, the sacrifices, bro. It's like, how big are the goals? Are you willing to set to set you apart from everyone else? Right. I remember I I came off two losses on a on a on on title fights. I lost to Sergio and I lost to Stotts. People don't come back from that rampage, as you know. Like yeah. I don't even think I can name one guy that has came back off two title fight losses to build themselves back up and become a champion in a big organization. I can't you know, think like people give up at that time. People are self destructive. People wonder if they still have it. Oh, I'm just gonna be just another. And I was just another fighter at that point because then they put me with Barzola and they're like, well, we'll see how you do with this one. And I was like, this was a fluke. I lost to Sergio on a broken foot and a broken hand within the first 15 seconds. I won that fight. Like, I've, I pushed the action. He sat back and countered. I don't believe counterfighters deserve a win in my eyes. So I said, okay, dusted it off, getting ready for the tournament. Sergio pulls out. He gets hurt. I fight Stotts, beating his ass, man. And then I don't know why. I don't know what. I don't know what the circumstances were. 
I thought I blocked this kick and I, and everything was ready for impact on the back of my head because he was coming up with the shin. Mm. The knee hits me in my forehead. The only place relaxed on my whole body was my face at that time because you're ready to catch. You know, everything's tight right here, but everything's relaxed right here. Yeah. Boom, hits me. I go to counter. Everything just zooms in. I'm like, whoa, this is weird. <laughs> and then I like fall and I see him coming. I'm like, shit, shit. And I try to grab him. Thankfully, Mike Beltran was there. You know, he let me live to see another day, right? Mm -hmm. And so stopped the fight. And uh, then I'm like, man, where do I go from here? Like, what do you do? Like, who are you? Like, you know, let me take some time off. Let me, let me like really think, what is my why again? Like, what is your why? Like, why did you fight? You know, why did you persevere through all your struggles? What did you come from? Where did you grow up? Weren't you fucking tired of that shit? Like, man, like... It sucks, dude. It sucks not having that break. It yeah. sucks not being that person that's yeah. the champion. It sucks waking up every day in a broken ass home, right? Like, shit sucks, bro. Yeah. And so, sitting back and seeing my family, just like, oh man, this ain't this ain't it. This ain't it for me, dog. And so, you know, I had to build up, bro. And they gave me the second chance. They said, hey, you want to fight in Ryzen? You want to fight in Japan? I said, bring it, bro. Like They're like, all right, you got to fight at 134.4, you know? And I was like, all right, let's do it. So fought one of the best guys there, bro. And uh, it's good. Emotion's good, right? Like, you're in, you're in the thickness, right? Like, this is why I do it. Like, you want that emotion. You want to feel alive. This makes me feel alive. And so going there and... Seeing the Japanese crowd changed my life, bro. Man, they, they are. It like changed them. my they life, love you. bro. Yeah. They love it, you. it was crazy. Like, seeing the impact that they had on me rejuvenated me. I'm not going to lie. I was like, I'm going to win this fight. There's no way I'm going to lose this fight. I'm going to win. I'm going to become their champion. They were so happy I beat that guy. He took out every Japanese dude there. And he, he, was, a, he was a rightful champion for that time right now. And so after that, Stayed there, promoted myself, and became a huge fan. Became a huge fan of Japan. Became a huge fan of their culture, their food, the way they were um, be able to preserve their history. And that's mm -hmm. that's what we lost as an American culture. We we always think bigger, better, tear down faster, bigger, better, tear down, and and it's a cycle, right? Where my culture got disintegrated, got it, um, you know, just completely obliterated, right? And so. Being able to see that is super cool. And then they said, hey, you're in, you are in a tournament for the uh, Bantamweight uh, tournament and you win these next two fights, you're going to be the champion. I said, all right, I, now I have my goal. I have my why. I have the proof to bring my dad here, my mom, all the sacrifices they made. And psh, my, mom, my mom gets up at 3.30 every morning from Hesperia in the high desert and drives all the way down to Irvine every day like sacrificing as a young kid just we live down here she got a good job we moved back up she uh she still stuck with the same job dad same thing sun up to sundown was basically his construction job right and so all hard work you know and i was like all right it's my turn to do what my dad has preached to us you know be uncomfortable thrive under circumstances that make you uncomfortable and be comfortable in that type of environment so when you ask why or how did i do that seeing that you know and then knowing what my mom and dad sacrificed for me to be where i'm at right now it's just like i can't let them down they've right. sacrificed too much and then you know my dad's i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna sugarcoat it when my dad looked at me he was like man i thought you were gonna die you know like cutting weight that was that's very tough as it's a dad dangerous. to it's see that yeah bro. the way and you I, cut weight is and dangerous. I, and i told my dad i said dad like uh you know you've raised me motherfucker to tell me when shit gets hard you don't fucking quit like who who are you to tell me that right now like i wasn't raised like don't ever fucking tell me that again bro like that how many times have you almost died driving to work how many deaths did my mom see car accidents after car accidents and her escape through and not die in in those long or those early morning drives and those late night drives back home and stuck in traffic like how dare you tell me that bro you you raised me way better than that and so that's why that's how i got through it you know knowing the sacrifices they made i couldn't let that go to waste just because oh i'm without water jesus made it 40 days and 40 nights without any water without any food fasted and just to show what your body could go through it'll persevere it's gonna hurt it's gonna be torturous don't get me wrong like 
I was laying on the streets of Tokyo uh, the day before I won this title and like a bum, bro. Just, just like a straight bum, bro. <laughs> like breathing the street, like just, uh, uh. and then I'm in the Saitama arena in front of 35,000 fans holding up a world title. It's like, bro. Now, I've never seen yeah. any fighter with this much passion and stuff for what he do mm -hmm. so much heart. No, it's so evident. You have so much passion and love for the game of fighting, and, and you're such a student of the martial art. You're such yeah. a student of the history and the fighters you have to fight. What preparation changed? You come off losses. You know, you have an amazing manager, kind of coach, Tiki. We know him, uh, you know, very famous, very understands the game as well. But what kind of training... What, what did that look like? Like, how do you, after two losses, do you completely change everything, the way you train, your schedule, how you look at the game? Like, what did you do to come back? Because to come back and win that belt the way you did, you know, it was unbelievable. Yeah, man. Um, luckily, I, again, I grew up wrestling my whole life. We learned how to deal with the loss and then move on and forget about it. You have to, as a, as a martial artist, you got to be able to accept defeat. And defeat makes you. It's not, it doesn't define you. It makes you, right? It puts you to the fire and it holds you there. And so Tiki, Paul, my strength and conditioning coach, Sam Calavita, held me to the flame. I'm not going to lie. It was very tough. It was very rigorous. But thankfully for my family, they understand. They, they A lot of understanding came from them, especially my wife and my kids, because they take the blunt force of the 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 traumatic drama that I have going through this right mm -hmm. and um so nothing changed in the training because again I still believe I'm the best in the world at what I do I still believe I'm the best not just 135 or I believe I'm the best fighter I could go 135 145 155 and win these belts and I'm going to with Ryzen I'm gonna go do that that intrigues me you know and if I need to do it for PFL I'll do it with PFL but there's only small hiccups and you got to believe in your coaching. You got to believe in, in your, your training partners and you got to believe in your preparation. Like I train my ass off as hard as I can. And I always get told you do too much. You do too much. Like how about when you're gassed out in the, in a fight, like in a real fight, like you're out there in the ring and you're gassed out and your lactic acid builds up. Don't you, don't you, don't you think you got to know how to perform under that fatigue? Like, that's why I train so fucking hard is because I got to know that when shit hits a fan and my fucking arms ain't working, my legs better be working. If my legs aren't working, my takedowns better be working. Like, because that's what happens in a fight, you know? So you have to train. And I overtrain. I, I admit I'm an overtrainer, but there's a reason why there's only one champion. There's a reason why I've won a, a title in every organization I fought for. Let me tell, let me tell you, Bear. I've trained with him for a lot of people don't know this they think i didn't train for my last fight but i trained really hard it's like one of my hardest training camps and before i get into it, i just want to say his his strength and conditioning coach coach kyle's the real deal he he actually changed my life he's the one who told me that i was mixed diagnosed i just wish i would have been training with him uh before like a lot a lot longer before my my fight i found out too late about that and it's all health reasons that's other there's something else but i trained with this guy right and my first time doing all this different type of training, I never was one of those guys flipping tires and and, <laughs> and doing the stuff he was doing. This guy was flipping like a 300, 400 pound tire up a hill. <laughs> and and they had me doing the same thing, right? His tire was the same size as mine. He flipped his tire up the hill and I'm looking at him like, man, I ain't gonna let this little motherfucker out flip me. And so I'm <laughs> flipping the tire up the hill. He flipped his tire, ran down the hill, pushed me out the way and then flipped my tire up the hill. <laughs> And I'm not joking. That I'm tire, that tire yeah. was heavy as fuck. And yeah. I started looking at him. This is the strongest guy I ever, I ever met for how mm -hmm. how small he is. Because I think I'm pretty strong, and yeah. I could I couldn't do what he did. And Coach Cal, he he, he a G man. I seen yeah. I seen him and TJ. It was me, him and TJ, and Coach Cal's garage. We we um riding that bike. What you call it? A spin yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah, little we, cycle ops. Man, I hated that. Yeah. I hate it. I so hate it. tough. Yeah, I've, tough. Seen, I've seen videos of you guys training. You're like in a garage. You're running. It looks like a Rocky Balboa movie. You're yeah. both in gray sweatpants. Yeah. Were you guys training with each other for a long time, for many years? No, no. Yeah. That was our first time training together. Yeah. I, I, I started training with him because um, I'm, I'm, I, I told him, I told one about my problem. I said, man, you know, I got this thyroid problem, but I'm on this medicine, but I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's helping. I'm, I'm not losing weight. He said, "Well, come train with me. Come meet Coach Kyle. Coach Kyle, get to know you. He like he, he'll look at your blood and he'll tell you what's wrong." 
And then I started training with them, and man, training got hard. I wanted to give up. I said, man, I, I'm gonna stick it out. Coach Kyle's super cool and everything. When he got to know me, he said, all right, let me see your blood work. He mm. he looked at my blood work and he was like, man, ain't nothing wrong with your thyroid. He said, it's your T3. And I told him what medicine I was on, he was like, your testosterone? No, no, no. T, it, whatever T3 is, something to do with yeah. your thyroid, but it's not your thyroid. Yeah. Wait, yeah. He a scientist where he broke it down. He's right. the only person that broke down all this medical stuff where I could understand at the yeah. time. I can't this recite it This was before your fight with Fedor? This was my, my fight with Fedor. So you had a full training camp for the Fedor fight? That was one of the hardest training camps I ever had. No because way. Yeah, because of the training we did. It was new stuff to me. Yeah, so this is what happened with Rampage, right? And... Obviously, he pulled off the medication, and he was training his ass off. I admit, he, he was getting there. At first, it was a little iffy because there are some things like, come on, Rampage, just push through a little more, bro. <laughs> you hard. got this shit, dude. And, you know, it, it comes in stages, right? Because you can't obviously do everything at once. And so during the middle of the camp is, is when it gets really intense. And this is when he had me and TJ, like, just pushing him, like, we had a 120-pound medicine ball throwing it at each other, like doing squats with it. We'd have to be on a BOSU ball, 80-pound, 100-pound ball, and it'd be for me to him right now. We had to squat down and then throw it up. He would have to squat down and throw it back. And so this is like it's working your proprioceptal nerves and your balance and, you know, just – you're going to be in a fight. So this is what you need to work on as far as the little muscles to be able to have that backup when your big muscles shut down. Right. And so when he was going through this, my wife was cooking for him at the time, doing his diet and things like that. And he was, he was on, he was, he was looking good. And the only thing I think where rampage messed up is when he got to Japan Think about this. He's been eating completely clean, no refined carbohydrates, no breads, no sugars. We pulled off a lot on on his diet and started like feeding them how you really should eat because uh, uh, here there's a lot of chemicals in these refined carbohydrates, these sugar, a lot of sugars. And so when he got to Japan, I think he just started consuming certain carbohydrates that his body wasn't used to. Mm. And so when you do that, what does your body do? It freaks out, right? And so that's why the swelling happened. His body was like, wait, I'm not ready for this. Like for me after my fight, I'm not gonna lie, I eat like an asshole after. I'll eat pizza, I'll eat bread, I'll eat sugar because I crave it. Like it's not that I crave it, it's just that I want something different from what I've been eating for the every single day, three times a day for the last 12 to 15 weeks. And so he just did it too early before his fight. I was told to carb up. Yeah. I'm not going to so say it on that. I was told to carb right up. Right before your fatal fight, you were carving up in Japan? Yeah. And but it, the and problem it, is you I carb up, up with noodles, you carb up with breads, and you carb up with this. Your body freaks out because it's not used to having it. He should have stuck with the simple carbs, yeah. the plant, wow. the, yeah. the, the, you know, the sweet potato. And there, there's things out there that you could do but just uh, not educated yeah. on what was going to happen during that time oh, after they, sweet potatoes in they do they have some of the best sweet potato it's like in a japan green one. it's like a green purple one Man, yeah I don't, I don't eat none green but so guacamole. If you, no so in japan if you go buy a grocery store <laughs> you can smell the sweet potato it smells good it's not the same it's not the same yes too. it is it's, it's a sweet a, japanese sweet potato bro it's so good so yeah, delicious I, I, I had it I had yeah. it. I had it like a month ago. It's like the, a purplish, greenish. That's an eggplant. Yeah. No, the that's an eggplant, bro. He loves sending the eggplant emoji, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Bro, you know how many different uh, potatoes there are, bro? There's like thousands of different he potatoes. He knows his agricultural game. Yeah. You don't hear him? Right. His family You ever been down to Peru, bro? <laughs> no, I ain't never been to like, Peru. Uh, over like 5,000 potatoes down there. Well, well, California confused anyway, because they call sweet potatoes yams and yam sweet potatoes out yeah. here. I'm from the South. We used to grow sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, good. Yeah, I ain't seen pie. I ain't seen no American sweet potatoes in Japan. I, I think everybody's culture's got a little bit different different name calling when it comes yeah. to their to their produce and agriculture and yeah. the way they sell it. In terms of the TJ concept though, yeah. you have TJ Dillashaw, one of the greatest 135ers ever. Right. Right. And he's in your training camp. He's also yeah. your your training partner, right? Yeah. Is he yeah. Like, how is he involved with you? How does TJ Dillashaw fit into this mix with you? So the whole uh so when I was in the lower stages of my career, like through King of the Cage and training, um, I know Coach Kell since I was bo born. Like, he went to high school with my dad. He knew me before I was born. He knew me when I was in my mom's belly. I probably heard him yell at me all the time, like, just through <laughs> practice, right? But, uh, no, um, so he had trained me, uh, and then my whole life, uh, him and my dad. And then when it came to 
martial arts, he wanted to work. He just started doing Ironman training and he was doing uh, um, these triathlons and things like that and becoming very good at it. And he started learning how to biohack the body. And so learning, uh, no, no, this no, was Coach Sam Calavita. Got him. <clears throat> and this is why our, uh, this starts kind of intertwining together. Uh, as I was training, I was going up to Alpha Males, going down to Palm Springs, working with Cub Swanson. I was working with Joe Benavides, Lance Palmer. Like I would travel a lot just to get the best. I would go find the best training I could because I knew that this was what it was going to have to take for me to become a champion. And so when I met TJ, he was getting ready to fight Dominique Cruz for the first time. And I used to, I switched stance a lot when I wrestled. So I was good at switching stance while I fought just because it was unknown to me. So I was like, I don't know how to do this. So I'm going to look for the best way to take a shot. And then him and Dwayne asked if I could work with him and TJ uh, for the, the Dominique fight. So I was like, hell yeah, for sure. Like he seems cool as fuck and he goes hard. Like I like to go i like to train my ass off too so we started connecting together and then i coached on the uh ultimate fighter with joe benavidez it was the the ultimate fighter before tj and so when tj got that second shot um against um uh what's he after he fought yeah he fought cruz and then uh then he was gonna fight garbrandt and then so he we, I, we had already been training and then uh and we were in denver training um with joe benavidez and brian moreno like mm -hmm. we, we were just out there with Dwayne up and and mm -hmm. tj's camp Dwayne Ludwig. yeah Dwayne Ludwig. no Dwayne uh, around your lips <laughs> <laughs> kiss my ass <laughs> uh no nah, but uh so <laughs> but uh yeah so we um so when tj came on he told me to go on to ultimate fighter with them and that's when i brought sam calavita and then okay. and then i told tj like hey uh this guy that i know that sponsored me he has a warehouse and we could put a gym inside there and at this time i was also a, 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 a mma consultant on the show kingdom with nick jonas frank gorilla it was a huge hit after the show was already done you was but, on that show yeah uh me and joe daddy were the um the mma consultants oh, for it yeah. and i want to so, ask you about that Thank yeah yeah going. and so when tj I, I said hey can i bring uh sam calavita on here he could start your training camp up and i'm telling you dude he's super smart like he has this all this stuff dialed in this was the first time people were doing vo2 max your rmr for uh mma athletes i had been doing it all along and so when sam had came on uh the show he was running some armor rmrs for people running the the vo2 max and telling tj okay this is where we're gonna set your 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 bar at um i recommend all those vitamins you're taking right now just push them to the side like it was a lot of on it stuff you know and then uh he said look at I'll, I'll kind of help you through and guide you through uh, your nutrition, your diet or uh, your nutrition, your supplementation, your training, your low zones, your impact zones. So TJ moved out here for that camp with Cody Garbrandt and looked phenomenal. He came uh, back. He was you, like, bro. You introduced him to Coach Cal. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, I knew Coach Cal my whole life, oh, you know. Okay. So and then uh, Steve Martin, who owns Legacy Builders here in California, it's super successful construction business down here in orange county awesome dude uh he had moved uh from one house closer to san clemente and his house was open so he said tj could stay at his house and so i told tj hey my sponsor said he would let you stay at his house this benefited me because now i have the best training partner in the world and then we are I, we got all this stuff from kingdom and we had put it inside this warehouse because they shut down shop and so we had everything and so all this stuff is just popping off. We have, you know, I, at the time I was also working with Cub Swanson, so Cub Swanson moved out here. Me, TJ, Cub, we were just a scrap pack, dude, at this point, getting ready to make one of the world's biggest martial arts team. And then uh, everything went to shit, bro. It's well, crazy. Why did it go shit? A lot of egos involved, you know, oh, okay. I would say. You know, a lot of people, uh, originally when I had got this gym, it was for uh for no one to make money, right? Uh, the guy that was that sponsored it, Steve Martin, um, with Legacy Builders, he was funding it for us. Mm -hmm. We got Mark Munoz in to come coach us. We had a couple other coaches. Well, then um, people started seeing dollar signs around it and started trying to implement little things that happened and trying to take money. Started getting sponsors, and it's like, whoa, whoa, what's what? what? And then it started. Then Steve started asking questions, like, "Dude, what's going on here?" I'm like, "Dude, I have no idea. This is getting crazy." Like, and he's like, "All right." And then fight the fighting started. Where you owe me this, I own this. This is mine. And I'm like, "Hold on, guys. Like, first of all, I put this together. <laughs> like, and now the guy that wanted to, that helped us put this together 
is going to pull the rug out from under us. So he did, you know, because he's seen how egotistical things got with people. And so the the rug got pulled, and then we kind of just all slowly uh, started separating that's and unfortunate. Yeah. going separate ways. I didn't know that. Yeah. Are you still cool with TJ? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, uh, we can, this, this was like, five years ago but then everything had kind of simmered down after that like we all sat down talked made it work for each other yeah. and then now we just didn't have a building to train now yeah. this is where tiki's place came into play because he was our manager and so um the tiki's like just come here come train here bring the guys in we'll train here i'm already i'm already running this gym so it helps him because it promotes his gym mm -hmm. and so we were, that's how we ended up at huntington beach i've seen training some of training sessions man there you go with it. yeah, yeah. No, i watched some of the videos and obviously new tj and I, I was like wow these guys are really like i felt like your sparring sessions were like kind of mini ufc fights like bro you guys are really fighting like i'm like yo do you <sighs> like a lot of people talk about tj dillashaw being one of the most intense sparring partners and that he is there to make you better but you know iron sharpens iron and he's gonna go as sharp as he needs to be but i mean what what is the what is the definition of tj's training sessions so you you come from a college program right where you're trying to be at ncaa champ so the mindset for Fullerton. yeah so the mindset for tj or any other college athlete is to be the best is to come in here and now you're dealing with a lot of guys that you're probably one of the favorites on the team you're probably one of the blue chip recruits but now you go into an nfl pro team now you're everyone is a man at this point so you try to bully someone you're gonna get bullied back you bully that person back he's gonna start it slowly starts to escalate right that's what coaching's for that's what's having the right coaching around and so people see but what you got to realize is even like for instance me and my wife used to butt heads a lot right in my career and uh get and it always be the last three weeks of my fight and so i finally had to tell her like babe look I fight every day. I'm not trying to come home and fight. I'm not trying to come home and compete. I'm not trying to come. I'm trying to come home just to let my hair down, so to speak. You know. You and so, hair. I know, but it's just a figure of speech. Okay, sorry, my but bad. let my beard down. Okay, Continue, uh, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so you get these guys that are challenged, you know, yeah. and uh, he's trying to be the best in the world, bro. And you you get the little bit of advantage of him. It's going to strike your ego because you're supposed to be the best. You're mm -hmm. supposed to be the champion, mm -hmm. and some people don't realize, like, they're trying to make a name off you in practice. So you're, and you're like, bro, it's practice. Settle down. Like, you're trying to kill someone, and that's how things escalate. So with me, I have no ego at all when I train. Like, when I feel someone going super hard, I pull, I pump the brakes and start saying, okay, like, chill I up. Gonna, I, get no, the, I thought you were going to say, when you feel somebody going super hard, you pull out. Nah. Yeah, I heard <laughs> That's what you was about to say. And you when change. I'm super hard, I pull out. <laughs> <laughs> you were just about to say that. When I feel somebody going super, super hard, hard, I pull out. But then you, no, you knew I was going to say something. Then I you pull back. It. Yeah, you said you pull back. You were say, I pull <laughs> out. You were going to say it. You knew I was going to jump on no, you. No, no. I was trying to jump on out. him. I don't know, bro. Hey, yo, no. Hey, yo, You want to no. wrestle no. him? No, listen, so. I, I do want to kick his ass because a couple of weeks ago, I was in the gym, man in my own business, and him and his boyfriend jumped me. Well, your boyfriend for, today? First of all, he got he got COVID, so he's not here. Who's his boyfriend? But <laughs> he got a boyfriend that he trained with. They bro, he's me. my boy, and he's a friend. Like, who is <laughs> my boyfriend, bro? He's it? my homie. Arnold Jimenez. He, they jumped yeah. me in the gym, bro. Both of them. Coach like they, was a witness. They, they put jumped. hands on you? They put hands on me. They jumped me. They couldn't take me one on one. We took him down, then put hands on like, I was out, hey, I was really out of shape. Oh bro, it took two of us, but we got him down. I was really out of shape. It was when I <laughs> when when coach he was fasting first that day. Here. This was his third oh, day man. fasting. I owe both of them my ass well. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna catch them one by one. But to, uh, to take down a, a guy like this, what do you gotta do? Just bum rush. Oh, okay. Bum rush and I'll be at the the blunt end of his force because that dude, he's a horse, man. This dude, guy? Yeah. He's a horse. Yeah, yeah he's, I've, he's I've been so called a horse. horse. All right, all right good, good to <laughs> know. But that's not man, good though. Good to know that he call you a horse. All right, continue about yeah. your story about training. Yeah. My yeah, bad. so like uh, people get misconstrued. Like people don't like getting punched, right? But what yeah. you got to realize is like, bro, we're mar in martial artists. You're going to get rocked. You're going to get hit. We're not playing checkers here. We're not going to sit here across the table. Yeah. We're going to we're gonna give each other real looks, you know? Have I been rocked by TJ in practice? yeah have i heard tj uh, during practice yeah has have you heard your train congo in the practice yeah probably he kind of rocked know. him a Con little bit i don't know congo has congo hurt you in practice oh, hell yeah yeah sure. see so like yeah, that's that like sense. and and so people misconstrue it as him being malicious yeah. which he does at times because he wants to keep pressing the gas pedal right yeah. but 
I mean, you got to learn to defend yourself. Yeah, you got to yeah, learn to yeah, yeah. strive under that. You just, remind, you just reminded me, uh, yeah, the first time I trained with Kungo, I think that's when I, I think when I, that's when I did the best against him. Uh, I brought Kungo in when I was uh, training for Chuck Liddell the second oh, time. Yeah. And Kungo was a big monster. And I, and I was like, man, I need, some, I need somebody that's going to strike the fear of God in me to go, you know, and train so yeah. I can... Um, so I can be at my best. And and Tiki reminded me, he said, man, the first time I, I came to Big Bread to see you train, I want to come and see you so I know if I can bet some money on you. You know yeah, how Tiki yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. He, said, yeah. he said, man, you was sparring with Congo and you was going at him. And Congo was grabbing You're going at him. <laughs> going, <laughs> going at him. Oh, okay, okay. And he and he said, <laughs> hey, yo. And he said, I was he said I was sparring Congo and Congo grabbed the, the cage. I was trying to take him down. He said, I ripped, I was ripping Congo off the cage. I picked him up and slammed. He said, Oh yeah. He said, I want to put a bet on you right there and there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, oh, you came with you came with the smoke for the training session. Oh man, I trained hard as oh, I was bro. in Big Bird. I was oh, yeah. training hard. Yeah. I remember. I remember you told me a story about that that you brought it in and just because you wanted someone that would be a a little bit more brutal, just yeah. like Chuck, right? Is that yeah, what you Congo. Congo yeah. kick. He kicked the shit out of me for years. Yeah. Congo, but he's a, he's a good guy. He he hurt yeah. you. But only thing I didn't like, he hurt you. Like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. He he'll come and kiss you on your neck. Yeah. Come on, yeah. man. Congo yeah. kiss you. And he'll kiss you on the neck. Congo. Every time he hits you. If he not, if he hurts you, he'll come and hook. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he'll kiss you on the neck. I'm like, hey. You kick my ass. <laughs> you, know, you kissing on the neck is worse than you. You low-key like when he kissed your neck? N- nibbles no. of the ear sometimes. I no, should have nibbled the ear, bro. Nibble the ear. I no, was like, bro, he, come he, on. He was in NHB. High school, bro. NHB. Wait, you're no. telling me right now you've watched Chicago watch Congo nibble Congo. on Rampage's ear? Yeah, when they were on the cage. He was like, sorry, I hurt you, bro. Because nah, he, he, he has some vicious nah, knees. Nah, no, nah. Congo has some vicious knees, bro. Yeah, huh. Congo does have some vicious and knees. And so when he never seen Congo nibble on my ear. Let me talk bro, about yeah. No, yeah. no, for real, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Congo, man. no, for real. He's definitely like, happy on the show. Don't blame him. I was head. like, come on, bro. Don't nibble his ear. All right, so I'm going to tell Congo you said this. Then we're going to jump you. Bro, Brett, bet. I, I asked Tiki, bro. Oh, he's Congo won't he, about this. Now, Congo won't nibble on my ear. He know. I already told him. The first time. First he's, time. he's bit some dudes. Like, oh, yeah, not yeah. like like. Are you putting yeah, on yeah, If you put Congo on the arm bar, he'll bite you. Like Mike Tyson's time? He'll just bite you. Oh, he'll bite your leg. You can't. If you put Congo on the arm bar, he'll bite you. He's tired wow. and he gets in the situation, bro. He's gonna be like, he he's care. gonna do something. No, 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 he he you guys yeah. train differently. Yeah, I mean, yeah. before we move on from the TJ thing, I do think a lot of the internet and a lot of the MMA community, people that are fans of the sport, not yeah. fighters, right? There's a big difference. I'm a, I'm a fan of the sport. I'm not a fighter. They do look at him and say, you know, based off the history and stuff, because I love TJ. He's probably one of the most uh, aggressive, most athletic, like mm. competitive fighters in and outside of the gym, right? Yeah. Like he puts the work on people, but. I do feel like even from things I've heard from him, from you, from TJ himself, is that he's training to be the world's best. That's why he's the world's best. So he trains at the highest level 24-7, seven days a week. He's not there to, to you know, play games. I feel like that misconception for the MMA fans that don't know what it takes to be a champion, they'll never understand that mentality. So he gets a bad rep for that. But in reality, that's what made him so good. Bro, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, yeah. guys that are sick in the head. <clears throat> that want to be the best, you know. Yeah. To be a legend, you have to be. You have to annihilate the people that are winning, mm-hmm. and that's what legends do. They go and they annihilate the people that are winning. They enjoy the process of becoming the champion, and that's who TJ is. He enjoys the process of becoming a champion. He goes and finds the best training partners he can that will yeah. challenge him. Like Rampage, he wanted Congo at that time because he was the toughest guy he could he could match with against Chuck Liddell to challenge him every day in practice. So you want that challenge. You want that. Hunters want that process. You know, the lions don't go hurt a weak gazelle. Uh, he, they will save that for the women lions to go hunt and capture and the younger ones. But when a lion gets up to go hunt a uh, male, he will go find the biggest, baddest he can to go stalk, prey, hunt, and kill. And that's what we are as top echelon fighters there's a lot of fighters that are mma yeah ufc they love being part of it Mm. but there's five percent of the people that love being the hunter me i fight people that are on the best momentum they possibly can tj he fights people on the best momentum that he possibly can because he loves that process of the challenge the dedication the hard work the nervousness makes you feel alive you think tj will make a comeback after that soldier injury I think he's so competitive that that motherfucker knows that he wants one more just to prove to himself that he's still the hunter. 
How, how bad was the injury, though? It was pretty bad. Oh, I mean, they've had to cut his arm off and put a whole new humorous head oh, on there. Oh, damn. He had to get a cadaver. cadaver. Like, yeah. he literally got another human body part put is inside it, of his body. Is there somebody else arm on him, like Jax? Well, it's not a whole arm. It's just the humorous head that they had to basically... But, is, it, but it, it's his arm, though. They didn't put somebody else's arm on his body. <laughs> no. The humor, the, the ball socket, the humorous head, they had to chop his off and let his fuse on to his other bone and then put that... Can, in there. can you come back from something like that, though? That he could. If anybody could, it's him. He understands something about TJ people also don't give him enough credit for. He understands diet, <clears> nutrition, <throat> training, supplements, recovery. This guy is a master of the craft. I mean, he's by far probably the best 135er, if not top 10 best fighter of all time. The guy understands what it takes to be a champion. Now, without sounding too big of a TJ fan, it is going to be probably the most difficult challenge yeah. you've He's ever had in his life. You and him, you and him, not the same weight class, though. Or, or yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I I was fighting at one like one thirty five for me. It's like it's it's everything, right? It's empty in the glass for sure. But the thing with TJ too is he was a kinesiology major. Like he dove into he he wanted to do this as a profession, like help people. And so when he met Sam. His sick little head just got demented and was just like, holy smokes. Is kinesiology, is that is just like being a gynecologist? No. <laughs> uh, it kind of helps people that have those problems with uh, things kinesi- down there. What's but, kinesiology? But kinesiology is basically like a physical therapist. Oh, and okay. Things that, uh, understanding help, the body yeah, movement, understanding the, tensions. Yeah. Oh, okay. do, you think, do you think PFL and Bellator now with this combined roster has more talent than the UFC? Um, you know what? I hate comparing, uh, uh, promotions together because I think each and every one is very unique. And the reason why PFL is so unique, bro, you have to do four fights in one year that people can't manage to do that. And that's why you see guys that are, um, like workhorses win those tournaments because they're able to withstand and weather the storm. And so, it's different, I think, for longevity-wise and people that uh, do things for real and don't take exogenated drugs and uh, take steroids and things like that. For those guys, it benefits because they're not fluctuating that high, right? Like someone like me, I could withstand a tournament like that. I could go in there and definitely win. So that's why it's so unique and different. But as far as roster to roster and champion to champion, we all train with each other. We all know the facts that we're all very close on any given night. Anyone can win those fights. And yeah. so, I mean, I've trained with Brian Ortega, Cub Swanson, TJ Dillashaw, you know, Brian Moreno, just like all these guys. And I have no insecurities. I don't have anything to hide. You know, I, I know who I am as a fighter. I know how good I am. And no matter where I'm going to be, I know I'm going to be a champion. You, you train with Brandon Moreno? Mm-hmm. Did you speak Spanish to him? <laughs> yeah. Or English? Both we Both. like uh Spanglish. Spanglish. He speaks yeah. good English. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I picked him up. I actually used to have a smart car when I, we drove to Denver after the Ultimate Fighter. He was getting ready. To, he uh uh he was he drove out there with me to help um uh Joe Benavidez get ready for Henry Cejudo that that fight when Tim Elliott was in the finals because it was Tim Elliott, it was Joe Benavidez, it was me, it was a uh, Brian uh a Brandon Moreno, TJ, Corey Sanhagen. Like th- this room was filled full of killers at that time. And you were training with all of them? Yeah, we were training with all of them. So it was cool, man. It how, was, did you, how did you do against Brandon Murillo? He he was smaller, but, you know, grappling-wise, uh, that's where I'm dominant, right? I grew up wrestling my whole life. So He's not a wrestler. Take him down, no. But uh, submission-wise, he was good at submission. He'd throw submissions up. I'd have to pass. And stand-up-wise, we were pretty much even. He's but, fast, you know. But you could take him down at will? Um, it, I, at will, I mean, I, I would get takedowns throughout the, the rounds and, uh, he would stuff, stuff my takedowns. It's like, you know, your, he your challenge, you? you know, it was, it was, <laughs> it was stuff in the takedown, <laughs> but, uh, not stuff, not stuff me like a turkey, bro. But, uh, did y'all spark, did y'all spark like striking as well? Yeah, we sparked, uh, spark you're striking. You're a little bit taller, you're a little bit bigger than him. Yeah, though. I'm bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I would, uh, horse him around, like, you know, get the takedowns that I needed when, you know, he was kind of like too fast. Like, oh shit, I got to take him down and weren't. Are, him down. are you thinking about going to 145 anytime soon? Yeah, I mean, on, honestly, uh, with with the things that are uh, uncertain with PFL and, and uh, Bellator, I mean, the next biggest fight for me after I dominate this dude in Japan is going to be the 145 match. Look, at, I became the first champion uh, for Ryzen that's an American. Right. And so now the next step to make another thing that they will never be able to race in history again is to have a champion versus champion fight. And that's going to be the 135 against 145 pound fight. Wow. And Japan wants that. They like, you've seen how it was that whole year. Like 
people are excited about uh, MMA again out there. People yeah. are showing up. Like yeah. before I got there, it was here and there, but this whole year that I was there, they were freaking excited about Bro, the it. energy in there was crazy. I'm going to I'm going to his next fight out there. On you New were there, right? You went I was there. At, at, that was your last the, fight. You were there the first one and my last one. I was there twice. Uh, didn't because you were there with AJ McKee. Remember yeah, the Bellator I was there with AJ versus McKee. Yeah, Ryzen? That's right. That was my first fight in Japan. That's right. I and was then there. you were there for my title fight. That's right. Yeah. But, and and the one before that. Uh, no, yeah, because AJ was supposed to fight on that one too. Yeah, like, yeah, he, got he, staff. he had staff. Yeah, yeah he, uh, he pulled out. So, yeah. so, so, teach me this. So, you said you're gonna be the 135 champion fighting for the 145 championship belt. Will you have to weigh in at 135? Why he no, no, no. The well, because it's gonna be for the 145 title. Oh, so you got, he can't oh, okay. he can't make 135, okay, right? Okay. So I'm going up to the weight class that was a to question. take that belt. Yeah, that was a stupid question. Yeah, yeah, yeah my bad. <laughs> and in terms of like UFC being a top dog in promotion, in terms of you know. When it comes to promoting and they have oh, yeah. a deep roster, do you feel that there's any organization out of the ones you fought in that comes close to that or you think is kind of on their tails in terms of being the pro top dog in promotion for fighting? Yeah, I, th I thought we were closing in very tightly Bellator before the uh, pandemic had hit. I thought we were making gains and they, they had this vision and we were ready to make a huge impact because we had a lot of uh, home-built guys at Bellator. I mean, Rampage, you know, we were we had AJ McKee. We just got done with the featherweight tournament. The featherweight tournament was insane. Like, I, I wanted the best. Like, again, I'm a hunter, right? I wanted the best in the division. And Patricio Pitbull had just knocked out Michael Chandler. And I said, give me him first. And they're like, bro, you're crazy. I said, dude. If I'm not here to fight the best, like, what am I doing? I'm not here to fight, like, try to find the bracket, see where I fit. Give me the best guy. Let's let, let No one wanted to fight him. I was the only one that called him out, so that's why they gave me the title fight in the first round. They were like, fuck, all right, you want to fight him? We went five-round decision, you know? That was a good fight, Yeah, too. and it sucked because that's when TJ had just got popped, and then I had my fight in New York in Madison Square Garden, and they let TJ corner me on that fight, and I knocked out Dudu Dantes, and then... Uh, after that, that put me, they wanted me in the Grand Prix. And so when I got in the Grand Prix, I was like, well, I want Pitbull first. And so TJ was trained, TJ and Cub were training me throughout that whole camp, had the game plan. We were locked in. And then right before the fight, 45 minutes before the fight, they come in my locker room and they tell me, Hey, uh, TJ can't corner you and Cub Swanson can't corner you. And I look around I'm like, what? And they're like, uh, Cubs, uh, coaching the the fight before you, I said, dude, people do that all the time, and they're like, well, TJ uh, was suspended, so he, we have to honor New York. I said, bro, he had just, I he was with me all week. I put down on the paper that he was in my corner. You guys didn't tell me anything. Now you're gonna tell me right before my fight. So we're fighting with commission right here, and this was before the freaking fight, like forty, legitimately forty. About he, TJ was about to wrap my hands, wow. and they, they tell him he has to leave the locker room. And so I no not too many people knew that I was dealing with that in the in the back. Bro, it was a fight before the fight. And it was just like through my training. Oh, yeah. dude. I what I should have done, I should have walked out. I should have been like, all right, cool. I'm out of here. I should have left. And I because I was after I thought about it, I was like, what if they would have came and told Roger Mayweather he can't he can't corner Floyd? What would Floyd would have done? Would have walked out. He would have said, All right, yeah. you're out of your mind. See you later. That's crazy. What like, did TJ do? Uh, he he was so pissed and, and like, well, because we were all arguing, and then TJ started realizing like, wait, this ain't about me. Like, let me get the fuck out of here. This is Juan's fighting like in forty five wow. minutes. So he walked out and he went to go sit in, in on ringside. But dude, the whole just the whole vibe was off the, at that point. You know, the everything fight, was perfect. Good that the, whole the, camp. The fight before the one you say he knocked out. What was his name? Dudu Dantes. Yeah, dude, he's what? That's what they call him. That's his nickname, Dudu Dantes. This is this a guy you donkey combed? Uh, no, that was a guy at Madison Square Garden. He went to throw a, a kick. I cross blocked it, and then I came down and bow, oh, yeah, yeah, just okay, like yeah, annihilated him. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, he was a thirty-five champ, and we fought at forty-five. And then, um, and then, because I was gonna go back down and fight at thirty-five for the title, but then the opportunity came up to fight in the bantam or the featherweight tournament at forty-five and fight Patricio. Who was first. the guy that you you knocked him out? That was you? Robbie Peralta. Uh, yeah, and he had just come. came out of UFC too. He had just lost and. Uh, um, and he won a fight, and then I, I fought him. But yeah, he had just came out of the UFC. And and, and what about um, Pettis? You gonna rematch him one day or what? Um, if, if, if the you know, I've never had a rematch, so I don't really count on it. 
I mean, if it happens, it, it I would love to. Um, for some reason, they've never given me a rematch on fights that I've wanted, and so. But for me, it's been fortunate because I, I, again, I go out and seek whoever's better. Like right now, I don't see why I would fight Pettis if Patchy has the belt. Like I'm at the point of my. Oh, he don't got the belt no more. No, Patchy choked him out in the well, in the, in the second round, uh, uh, October. So how did I miss that? Yeah, it was the last Bellator, that Bellator 301. Oh, that's probably why. I yeah. Be- Bellator, between, you know, my opinion, I don't think they do a great job of promoting. Yeah, they, they and that's where, well, again, we were Especially picking up steam. Yeah, right. when you were talking about picking up steam, or like, you know, did you feel like, mm-hmm. you know, what was the best? We were rising, right? The cream was rising to the top. And uh, once that stuff with the pandemic hit, they just didn't care. They weren't giving us the promotion. And it wasn't due to Bellator's in. I think it was due more to Viacom and throwing us on right. Showtime. Mm-hmm. And Because we were promised a lot from Steve Espinoza uh, when we all went down and met with Showtime, did a bunch of uh, bunch of um, uh, promoting stuff and got things ready for Showtime because mm-hmm. it was our new home. And he's like, oh, we're going to be telling stories. We're going to be promoting you guys. We're going to be having you guys at boxing events. We're going to be promoting the hell out of you. Then all of a sudden, nothing happened. We were like... Well, we were, we're we're worse off than we were when we were on the zone. Like the zone right. was killing it. We right. we just got like this huge network deal with the zone. Yeah, we were gonna that. kill yeah. it, and then boom, pandemic hit. Yeah, you know when I figured out that Bellator wasn't really promoting well, is um people would come come ask me, man, I miss your fight. When are you going to fight again? When are you going to fight again? I I'm like, I just fought last weekend yeah. in Bellator. Yeah, the people thought I retired. Yeah, Patchy pa- Patchy mix is like nineteen and one, yeah. right? And obviously he's he's a force to be reckoned. And is there a rematch going on there? Yeah, I mean that's the thing with the PFL. And when I told him, that's when uh, the beginning I was trying to say like we have a very unique situation here with me being the rising champ, and because they want to make the champions versus champions, I was like, well, you might as well throw me and Patchy on there, like, and fight each other. But some of my coaches feel like he wants to like uh maybe fight someone else before yeah. me or, or or something. He's not we're not sure. Yeah. He said he's hinted that he's wanted to fight me uh and said he'd take whoever the promotion gives him, which is correct, right? It's like the the right thing to say. And uh for me, of course I wanna fight him. Of course yeah. I wanna go get this belt back. And uh and this is this is why I carry both of them together because I see my goals every day. My goal is to put we not uh, tie two belts together, right? Tie, like and now unify three belts, possibly with the PFL. Like this is something that's never been. Well, Horiguchi had tied these two together and unified these two, but for three belts with the PFL, the Bellator, and Ryzen, like dude. Then that, you're gonna have your sights on the UFC belt after that. I mean, that that's been the ultimate goal. Um, it's hard because Dana's never really signed anyone after 35 right so oh, for it's real? almost like is that a thing yeah uh i think they they kind of t- limit their guys down at 35 he just signed that six seven um black dude the, that, the guy in the olympics right he's like an olympic kickboxer or something uh, kick- taekwondo or something yeah. he's been knocking people out yeah so, so it's like, like 38 the, it's like the benefits right like I admit, like I'm not a I'm not a knockout artist. I'm not a uh, I'm a guy that's a hard worker. I'm a blue collar motherfucker. Like I go in there and I'll work my ass off, and you're gonna get what you get. If the guy wants to, you know, whatever the fight takes me, it takes me, you know. And I'm gonna work my ass off to get the win. Sometimes I get the knockout. Sometimes I get the finish. Sometimes I get the ground and pound or not. But with me, you're not you're not necessarily guaranteed a knockout, but you're guaranteed a fight of the night. You're guaranteed some action. You're guaranteed excitement. some scrambling and some excitement. I'm a fight with my heart on my sleeve. Speaking so, of resistance, man, you can go to the UFC and get it. You got the yeah, right manager. I think so. You got too. the right manager you got, to go to the. To the you got the and guy again, that can get you in there. I want to a hundred percent. I want to, and that was that's why. Honestly, my career when I when I came out of King of Cage, I was a four division champ. I was the only one. I'm still the only one in MMA to hold four belts for one promotion, and people are like. Yeah, but that was king of the case. It's like, yeah, but it's still never been done. You can right. say it was this, was it's, that. It's still no it's easy never test. been done. I, yeah. I never got the king of case belt. I always yeah. wanted the king. I, I'm the Gladiator Challenge first champion. Yeah, when they first started, but and I, I won, won that belt too. Yeah, yeah. bro, I, too? I followed your footsteps, bro. Like <laughs> I'm telling you, every you promotion you me. fought for, I know, but I wanted to be. <laughs> I want to be. I want to. I want to follow your shadow. Yeah. You know, that's why you're again. You were one of my favorite fighters, Thanks, bro. bro. And you still are. Like I still. Hold you in high regard, so right? So you're gonna do boxing after you done MMA? Yeah, that's my next journey. Yeah, man. I mean, I would love to, right? Like, it's something that's definitely different for me and would definitely challenge me. But uh, would you, you know, do jujitsu tournaments? Yeah, I think I would do jujitsu tournaments. Um, you know, I I don't really know what would how I would benefit out of it um, besides a challenge, but yeah. 
I'm a prize fighter now, you know? Could do one or something. They're giving big purses. Leo Vera was in here, and he handles all the submission grappling and jiu-jitsu for one in Asia, and they have crazy fights with guys like, you know, Bouchesh is doing MMA, but they have the Rotolo brothers. Yeah, they they're some, good, the Rotolo yeah, brothers. They, they have all kinds of unique fighters over there. You have such admiration for Rampage, and Rampage has talked so highly of you. Since we started this show, the, the first name that comes out of his mouth every time we say, hey, who should be the next <laughs> guest is one. He's been trying to get you on this thing for a while. I know we had you scheduled, but we had a little day that day. Yeah, he, um, and he was busy. He, he'd be going over yeah. to Mexico and Spain, and he'd be going on little family yeah. vacations and stuff. Like, come on, man, when are you going to have time for your brother? Yeah. And, and, and in terms <laughs> of the love you guys have for each other and the friendship, obviously I've seen some of the videos of training. Tell me, tell me one of the best moments you've had training with him, getting ready for a fight, either you getting ready for a fight or him getting ready for a fight. Man, the best thing I've ever had, the best time I've ever had with Rampage was training in the garage because everything's so damn serious in there, right? Like you're sweating, you're crying, you're bleeding, you're fatigued. And Rampage out of nowhere <laughs> will make Coach Kel super uncomfortable <laughs> with his like sexual innuendo jokes, you know? <laughs> like, oh, that's what he, he said. That's what he said. And it's like, bro, come on. Oh, bro, I'm tired right now. Like, they just pop out of nowhere. Just like his, you know, like, oh, you would be that gay or something like that. Or he wouldn't say that, but it'll be like, oh, it'll just be like a, a, like just one of those jokes. And you're just like, bro, come on, bro. This is, this is too funny. I got to laugh when I train. I just, I just have to. Might you like to make fun of the the moment? Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just have to, when I'm training, like this, it's like, I don't really like training that much, yeah. but I do it, right? I just I just don't like it. So I have to make myself laugh, and I have to find something funny. Like, you mess yeah. up and you say something, I'm going to be like, that's why Shay said. Yeah. I'm going I'm to throw something like, out there. Come on, Rampage. Yank that thing up. Coach, don't tell me to yank that thing up while I'm lifting this right now. I was just like, bro, come on. Does it help pass the time, or what's yeah. it do for you? It makes, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, makes it easier? Yeah, it, it uh, makes it easier for me. It gets me in, like, a, a better positive mental space yeah. and I, I get a little good laugh and I keep going. That's why that's why I love training with Coach Bobby. Like we yeah. work hard and stuff like that. But every now and then we'll have a laugh yeah. and we'll fall out laughing yeah. and then we yeah. then we back right to back training. That's it. that's the way I like that's why I like to train. I've only had one coach that I've had training that didn't like to laugh while yeah. the training was uh, Lance Gibson. Uh, I love him. He's yeah, a, Lance he's, Gibson. Lance, he's a great coach. But, yeah, he is. But he, no jokes. He, no jokes. Yeah. No, I, mean, I mean, you got the belt. You obviously know how to train, and everybody's got a unique situation. Yeah. So whatever works for you works for you. You yeah. know what I mean? It works for It's me. a comic relief for sure. Like, it, it was definitely helpful because instead of fearing going to the garage th those days, yeah. I was looking forward going to there because I wanted to see Rampage, and I wanted That's to see cool. him train hard and then crack jokes and kind of pass the time you yeah know? he started cracking jokes too and then then i started getting better i started getting stronger at throwing the bosu ball yeah. then he started cheating yeah. the what the the what you call it uh, the medicine ball and the bosu so we'd be on oh, the bosu yeah. ball and that and that's where you know he we would throw the balls yeah <laughs> he was always trying to throw like the balls around the ball. what no i'm just asking yeah. why everything <laughs> no, 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 no. You, no, you, yeah. you made that no, thing. I, I look up to your training regimen i follow no. everything you do with coach no Bobby, no we do in the gym no no we throwing big 100 pound black balls yeah and one, <laughs> one would catch him right in his mouth. <laughs> Wait, you would just use your mouse guard to protect. Your I would chin? try to use my head so because they're so heavy. No, but it, but it was this game. It was this game where you got to stand on these. You got balance on these boshu balls. You know what yeah. that is? It's like a half. It's like a what is that? Oh, the thing you hold in your hand. You no, 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 no. What do you mean no? Why you put your head like no, that? No, 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 it's not that. <laughs> yeah, like, get, get the up. juggle. Yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 no. The caress. This is stress balls. No, yeah, the stress balls. Tell them what the boshu balls. The boshu balls are the one with the blue ball. Bottom and then it has a black platform. Some oh, yes, people yes, turn yes, it yes, over yes, this yes, way. Yes, I did that at yoga one time. Way. It's good for your body. Yeah. yeah. So well, we use the the ball side goes on the ground. So it's if you go to step on it, oh bro. Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta say this one without sounding sus. One time, oh man, I was dying. Rampage seen us drunk because we're good. You know, we go like this and we jump on with two feet. No problem. Boom. And then he, uh, coach would throw the ball at us real, right away and we'd catch it. But one time, Rampage went to jump on the ball. And it bounced, and his feet fell out from under him, and he hit his ass on the asphalt, bro. We were dying. I wasn't good at it. They was bro. already, they was already good. Me, him, and TJ, we all training. They were already good at it. It was my first time training. You wanted TJ bro. Dillashaw. He yeah. goes to jump on the ball. He just falls. It, it, it gave and like popped up a little bit, and you see his little yeah white Nikes on, or like white shoes on, just up in the air, bro, busted his. ass. Ass on the ass, bro, bro. I'm training with two lightweights. I'm yeah. the only heavyweight there, and I'm I'm trying to keep up with these two little guys. And they had to cheat. I, I, I got good balance. I started yeah. getting good. And you got to throw you got to throw the the big heavy 
a hundred pound um, medicine, medicine ball. ball at each other and, and try to knock each other off the ball. Like your uh, yeah. goal is oh, to wow. like hold it for because you can't really like throw it underhand. You have to push it off your chest, or you gotta throw it high. You gotta make them not reach too far because you can't grab a hundred pound butt medicine ball here. You kind of throw it at their shoulder. Well, we used to get the way a little bit past his shoulder, right? Or drop it a little bit yeah. under. No, it's he, supposed to go to his waist. No, one took it one time and he just threw it right <laughs> at my feet. And so, made me fall off the thing. It's like, you, yeah. think, you know, you lose your balance, you fall. It's, they had to cheat, so, man. So who are you sparring with? If they're sparring with them, who do you have in No, there? no, I wasn't. Uh, that wasn't sparring. That was yeah, that like was strength. a lift. Yeah, yeah that, that was like strength. strength. Oh, this is just strength and conditioning. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. the problem was he would fatigue us first. Uh, like run up the hill, like do these things, do all these exercises first, oh, like got it. Uh, uh, one leg RDLs and things like that. Then he'd be like, okay, get on the the BOSU ball. So your legs are, oh, wow. me, are already zapped. And so you're like, they're already shaking. So you jump on there. I remember Rampage first getting on there. His, his, his little ball was like, his legs were shaking like this and the ball was moving like this. I was like, this dude's going to eat shit. It, it, it was some of the hardest strength and conditioning I've ever, ever done. Like harder than what we did in wrestling practice in college. You going to do oh, some of that bro. getting ready for boxing? I don't know. I, I, I You know what? I, I I would like to, but I'm gonna tell you this: I haven't been back to that garage. Since. <laughs> it's that hard. Oh, yeah. I, it, it, every day, if I did, even though I was joking and stuff like that, it made yeah. me like want to quit fighting. I'm like, that's how hard the training was. Like, I, I like, I don't I don't think I want to do this anymore. Before we wrap up, I want to know what your uh, your relationship is, or what was your experience working with Jonas and and on the show and Joe and all these guys. What was the show that you were doing? Explain it to me. Uh, so yeah, w when we got on the, uh, on the show kingdom, it was super cool. Like, cause again, I had a young adolescent mind going into fighting. Like I want to be the best. I want to be undefeated. I want to do all these things. Right. Well, they helped me grow out of that. They were like, listen, like this is a business now. Like you got to understand and, and really prioritize who you are as a fighter and, start using your name as a business mm. and so they they opened up that realm to me on like because for me i just always thought about training competing and that was it so now how to set goals and financially and how to set goals for your career and how to plan for the future has been beneficial there because they showed me what it was to be a, uh, a real celebrity you what know what were you doing on the show so I would train with Nick, Jonathan Tucker, Matt Laria, Frank Gorillo. I was like one of the trusted guys that they knew like, okay, we throw Juan in on the scene and we know he's not going to hurt Nick Jonas. We're going to throw oh, wow. Juan on the scene so he doesn't hurt Frank. And he's going to make him look good. Like he's going to make sure like they're, it looks like they're in, in an intense situation. Brother? Yeah, with Nick, we would get in there like for sparring wise because like, I was used as a teammate for them. So everything for me was being in their corner, helping them cut weight. And sometimes like, because uh, I, I help a lot of people cut weight on on their um, in their career, like MMA, like TJ, Cub, uh, Brian. Like I'm a, I'm a specialist when it comes to that. Thank, thanks to Coach Cal, I know how to manipulate the body so people are, are exactly on weight. Like, mm. There's been a couple of times like Yair Rodriguez when he got uh, fought um, Korean Zombie, he took it on a couple of days notice, and then he was he had went to the hospital uh, because he had some things that are were some problems, and then they brought me in. They're like, "Hey, can you have him make weight?" And I was like, "Yeah, I can." And so we went in there. We had to make <laughs> we made him make weight and had him spot on. Went in there and obviously got the knockout of his lifetime, right? And so he that's what he knocked the Korean Zombie out. Then? Yeah, with a nasty like buzzer beater behind the uh, behind the back oh, elbow, man. boom, just ran into it. Did you get paid? Left. Yeah, did you get paid losing. to help people cut weight. Sometimes, you know, like it depends on the person, you know, like uh, if the UFC paid for paid for the like the UFC uh, paid for that and and things like that because you know my manager Tiki, he's amazing at what he does, and so and I was getting ready to fight a week later, so I was in and out, bro. Like I went there for five days, helped him make weight, and then I was back and I had a fight in six days. So oh, that's crazy. I yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't have done it. Like yeah, you, you got to be selfish as a fight. I'm well, like, like at, at that point, I realized who I was going to be around too, so it was more beneficial because TJ had already there's a couple guys out of the gym already so i was like okay i could go to new mexico i already uh knew a bunch of people in new mexico to train and do things like that so i knew my training was there so that's what we we would do for nick jonas like he wanted to look good for a scene or or, or, or one of the guys uh john the tucker he wanted to look like he really cut weight so i would help these guys through those situations so it was re very beneficial on my end to work with those guys grow the relationship with them and then in return they 
they would feed me back knowledge on how to promote yourself, how to present yourself, how to be a, a professional, cool. you know, because at that time I was just some free game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. can't beat that. Yeah. For before, before I go, I got one more thing for you, and I know Rampage probably has another joke about you know black balls and medicine balls. Well, and I don't. He's joking about balls. No, no, black <laughs> balls and medicine balls and blue balls. <laughs> You know, all kinds of balls. Rampage loves balls. So, um, <laughs> no, I don't. What, what, uh, you know, in terms of division and rankings, regardless of promotions, I want to kind of name off a couple weight classes and see who you think the best in the world is right okay. now. So, at, at 135, who do you think the best fighter in the world is? Me. <laughs> I yeah. love that. Yeah, definitely me. I love that. What about 145? 145, man. Uh, it's definitely Volkanovsky, obviously. But he's gonna have a hell of a fight. I think Torpuria is catching up, and I think he's gonna—he's young, dumb. But the only problem is full of cum, so to speak, right? He's gonna try to shoot his load in the beginning. And how, how you well, know? How you know about all this? Uh, because that's a, it's a, it's a saying, bro. I don't know uh, if he's uh, full of cum, but oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. But it's like that young saying, like when you're young, you're dumb, and you're full of cum. He's uh, gonna go out there and try to bust he's out, metaphorically. Like, speaking. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, you, like he did some, <laughs> and now you learn but, something new every day. I didn't yeah. know this side of one. He cried today, like DC. I, yeah, I, I, dude, I don't it know. gets emotional, hey, with passion, right? Yeah, with, with passion. passion bro, and I actually yeah. felt that. Yeah, regardless, you know, regardless of the joking, though, I do want to say yeah. that that emotion on this podcast and that emotion, what where you're doing the MMA community. They stand behind that because they understand you you speaking from your heart and from yeah. a place of what you're doing for your family and your future. And right. that's why we do this so the MMA community can see a good side of people. Yeah, so yeah. I salute but, you on not holding Yeah, but back. he went from net to talking about some guy busting a load. Yeah, that is crazy, though. So yeah. he busts the load. How do you know about this, though? Um, well, because he's young, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's dumb. <laughs> and he's full of gum, bro. Like, 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 that's why I knew I was going to be Patchy Mix, for instance, yeah. right? Like, even Cub, like just getting game from guys like uh, like Rampage yeah. and 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 Cub he and like loads with you, yeah. They, but you know, on the bagel, last person to do it, he took. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the patch oh, you already knew that. No, he was but yeah, come like you quick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He was gonna try to bust his load quick and get me out of there in two. You know, it was like cool with withstand the first two rounds and. I mean, boom, that's I think that's his only loss, right? Yeah, nineteen, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, even an amateur, yeah. like yeah, he gave him his first loss. Are oh, you getting his first loss? Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's a great fighter too. Yeah, he is. I hope to have him on the show here. Yeah. Yeah, for talk sure. to him about that loss he got from you. Yeah. Uh, at 170. 170. Whew, man. I think Colby, bro. Colby, honestly, like, uh, it was Usman, right? But, like, obviously getting knocked out and then losing against... Um, yeah, but I just don't see last Edwards. Minute. That was a last minute last fight. You minute can't. Fight. You can't really. No, 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 no. Losing twice to Edwards. Not, not because oh, okay. he he didn't fight at one seventy on that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, because come on, Shemayev, Like he still showed that he could have for sure taken out Shemayev at yeah. full camp, right? But no, I, I I think Colby, man. I think he's right now. Like I think he's gonna win the title. So I think he's. That's why I think he's the best right now because he's gonna go win the win wow. the title. And uh, two hundred five. Two hundred five. Nemkov is good, dude. Like, uh, Bless you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think he's very good. I think he's better than... Oh, man. Pereira, though. I think Nemkov beats uh, per, per, uh, Pereira, you know? Really? Yeah. Wow. I think he has a lot of good uh, wrestling, and he's able to take some shots. And he, he, he has that Fedor game, you know, where he pulls you in and he draws you out. Pulls you in and draws you out. And then he finds his opening, takes it, and he leaves. He takes it and he leaves, you know? Yeah. The draw and that, like, bait, yeah. that, that bait, Fedor kind of had that, too. Kind of yeah. bring you in with a kid. Where you're like, I'm going to hit you, motherfucker. Yeah. Here, I'm, and, then, and then he falls short. Yeah, Pereira don't, don't, he don't have wrestling huh, at all, huh? No, nah, I mean, what, what the, about is, he, down is he fight? He does have uh, defense, you know. He, he's, but again, it's get, getting up. But you got to punish people when you're when they're down there, and that's mm -hmm. where some uh, they didn't do. Jury didn't do a good job of like mm -hmm. punishing them when you get down there, you mm -hmm. know. And last is a heavyweight. You know, you have John Jones, obviously, and you have a lot going on there. What do you think, man? That UK dude is tough, dude. You got to give it to John Jones, a heavyweight though. But with 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 Aspinall, yeah, Aspinall. I mean, honestly, Francis, bro. Yeah, yeah. Francis, I would give him like, wow. yeah. like Francis is good, bro. Like you, you haven't been able. I, I like John. The reason why I like John is because he's gonna try to beat you at what you're best at, and that's what I've always. John? Yeah, like when he's he's fought some guys that. <laughs> 
you know, that I was supposed to submit them. He's like, okay, I'm going to go out there and, and I submit them. You know? uh, yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm stand with who I'm going to bang them out and try to knock them out. I'm going to try to do these things to these guys, right? We're going, we're going off your opinions, which is, is your opinion. But yeah. John Jones, when he moved to heavyweight and and who who he fight? Is Sierra Guns? Yeah. That's that's not he beat him in submission. That's not and that, and that's why I don't think he's a better heavyweight. Okay. Right? And that and but, he, but, but like I said, I said when he at a younger John and, that, and that's why I was but defending he asked you about heavyweight. But that's why I was defending myself when you said is John Jones the best heavyweight. And I okay. said at the time he would have been Touché. But I'm saying right now he's Francis not. Ngannou. Yeah, Francis said. Ngannou. But 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 yeah. I, what I'm going off is what you said like John Jones beat people what they're good at and he his, used to at 205. Yeah, but heavyweight he's just going to try to get the W. Yeah, right? now, right, he, okay. now he's we are we he, on the same yeah, page. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah now but, he's going to be like I got to do what I got to do to win and he's older like he's not the he's not the egotistical type deal like I'm going to beat you where you're better at now. Mm. Like with the he did he did it with DC, right? Yeah. Like at 205 yeah, but yeah. D, that's a cut of DC, you know. So yeah. so now you saying Francis Ngun. Yeah. 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 I agree. I, I agree with yeah, that. That's a bad man. I mean, look what he did with the boxing fight, right? Mm. No one Jones. gave him a chance, bro. No one gave him a chance. How do you think Francis would do against John Jones if they, if they fought uh, now? Takedowns will be hard to stop, right? As long as he's able to work a little more defense. And the problem with most MMA guys, wrestling's too hard for them. They don't want to go wrestle. They don't want to put the put themselves in these situations that they're losing because they're egos so big if it gets deflated when they're wrestling and they're getting beat by these younger guys they they don't have that same momentum me i still go to st like this morning i went to st john bosco who it's the number one school down here in southern california mm -hmm. that wrestles really good at football they're ranked top five in the country for wrestling bro that's been the secret to my success is staying true to that and the older i get the same age these kids stay. They're all high school kids, and they're good, and they want to beat me. They want to challenge me. Like every day, I get the best of them. How, how do you do against the high school kids? The right, now they're, they're, they're starting. To get, now they're starting to you know get the edge on me because it's it, yeah. I haven't wrestled in a real competition, but it it, it been like two years till they started catching me and they started actually really beating me. Because it's different like, oh, women man. wrestling, it and yeah, it's different. Because so now I'm like you know jumping guillotines a little bit because I want to envision what I'm doing like now I'm at to the point where I'm title fighting you know I'm, I'm doing these things like I want these dudes to shoot because I want to see where I can get my submission I want to see where I can position myself I want to see how I can scramble out or if someone's a, a wrestler how are they going to scramble out that way I can know the next position I'm going into would, would um what, what would your advice be to somebody like um Francis Mugano that would have to um fight a, a wrestler somebody that's really wrestling would, you, would your advice be go go wrestle with high school kids or do strictly MMA wrestling. I think for like someone like Francis, high school kids are too too small for them. He would need to grab people. What are they heavyweights in, in high school? I know, but the, the, they're still they're still too small. Like that. Like for me, it's good because I could go with a one sixty pounder. They're the same strength as my man strength. The high school kid is going to be the same man strength as Francis Ngannou. Mm -hmm. So. He has to go into a college level room and be able to wrestle these heavyweights there and get taken down, get rid. You know what it's like to get taken down and ridden like by a wrestler. Like it's hard to get up, right? Like yeah, it it, it, it truly is. It like is, if they up, throw yeah. the leg in, they they get your wrist right and they're you're trying to work up and they're moving on the top wrestler yeah. that knows what they're doing. It's worse yeah. than jujitsu. Yeah, like, I had, I had to that agree knows. with you. I had to agree with you. I didn't think about him going to high school wrestling, I mean, college wrestling, because I think that that would be discouraging for him because they're, they're on another level. But the good thing about wrestlers is they work to your expertise. They work to your level, right? Come on, think about this. Yeah. Think about Francis Ngannou yeah. going to a high school, or I'm sorry, a college wrestling room. Everybody going to want to take him down and, and, him. and kick his ass and say, oh, I kicked Francis Ngannou's ass in wrestling. I mean, but look at the, the it, facts, though. John Jones getting ready for a fight, brought in Gordon Ryan, who's right. the best, basically the best grappler, submission grappler in the world. It's different, though, because John Jones, he's already a high-level um, jiu-jitsu, though. John yeah. Jones, his jiu-jitsu yeah. is a high level. Yeah, yeah, but it's, I mean, if, if uh, the point is if Francis wants to take it to that level, yeah. he needs to go get the best training he can get, and he's right. I mean, going yeah. against these kids, imagine a guy like Gable Stevenson, right? Yeah. One of the greatest college wrestlers of all time. He, Jackson athlete, an amazing I mean, this guy is literally the best yeah. wrestler. He won an Olympic gold medal. Yeah. At imagine, young Fra age. yeah. Imagine Francis and Ganyu going to that college. He's gonna get the best work he's ever. Yeah, but he's gonna get it. He's gonna get his ass kicked. No, but against someone like Gable, no, because if there's no cameras, like yeah, just put just, all the bullshit aside, right? Yeah, and yeah. you're like, I want to. I'm here to get better, bro. Please yeah. help me. Like, yeah. if you open yourself up, sincere to wrestlers, 
you get that payback. That first, they're gonna respect you because you're yeah. like, holy shit, this guy's in here and he's a big name guy. Like kids at the high school, they're like, okay, I'm not gonna twist Juan's ankle and and get a takedown so bad it's gonna hurt him that he can't fight. Like sometimes they give things up that we get in a scramble. Like, okay, hey, let's just stop here because I don't want to tweak something. I'm like, oh, thanks. Okay, cool. So we stand back up and we start back over on our feet. And I feel like wrestlers are naturally like that. Now, yeah. if there's cameras and things are rolling, you're not going to embarrass me in front of my room. Right, Hell right. That's why, that's why I'm yeah. saying because they always feminine. For, yeah. It's a, it's a content world. See, me personally, this is what I would do. If I was Francis Ngannou, I would, <laughs> I would, I would start off um, and give me a couple of high school yeah. heavyweights. That's okay. what I would do, just to build up my confidence. Yeah. And then I would bring in um, some some college wrestlers. Agreed. Yeah. I okay. mean, Francis also has Eric, you know, from Extreme yeah. Couture yeah. over there in Vegas, and like yeah. Eric's obviously an amazing coach, and he has an amazing team. I'm sure they would be able to get the right guys with no ego, no mm. camera, no media, and just get good work in. And I think he'd be fine, but. Definitely, if you want to be the best, everything I've seen as a fan, everything I've heard from Rampage and all these legends sitting here, you need to train against the best. It's yeah. simple, hands yeah. down. You want to take the easy way out and have a, a light training camp or be like these boxers that just go from coach to coach because they have a, a guy that's like a yes man and lets them kind of run their own schedule. You're not going to be a world champion. Well, you're just going to be an MMA fighter, and that's what that's some people want to be, right? Like, But I don't think Francis wants that. Francis wants to be the best. He's the man. He yeah. proved it. He, yeah, showed exactly. it. he proved it. He wants to be the best. Yeah. I, I couldn't thank you enough for coming yeah, here, man. That's yeah, one of the most accomplished guys. MMA fighters in the game right now. And obviously what you're doing is unprecedented. Carrying thank around you. straps for multiple <laughs> divisions and multiple... Yes. Multiple organizations is amazing. You have a big fight coming up in January, right? Yes, on New Year's, on New Year's Eve. Eve. So the way that American fans could watch that fight is if they turn on to, I don't get no pay-per-view, I don't really care, but the way that they're going to be able to, to watch it is on Fight TV. Uh, that's where I watch Ryzen fights at. Uh, you could go on there. It's like 20 bucks, whatever it is. Yeah. Or will you be um, promoting on your social media? Yeah, I'll, I'll be promoting what's your, it. What's your social media? My what? social media is J-A-R-C-H-M-M-A. Uh, J Arch, it's Juan Archuleta, basically, and a mixed martial artist. That's so. all your social media. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. It's all all across the board on that. Mm. But yeah, I mean, that's where American fans could tune in and like root for your first American Rising Champion. Like I'm, I'm the first. This is the only time you're gonna see this belt on American soil is from me, right? Until the next person does it. But you, do you think any other American ha have have their eyes set on that belt? Uh, you know what's cool and and that uh, he brought up is like you know like outside of UFC when you fight these fights you know what's cool is I get a lot of respect from fighters is like man you're so lucky that you got to go out to Ryzen and fight for Japan like that's super cool because I've always wanted to do that right and mm -hmm. so this is coveted by a lot of fighters and mm -hmm. that's what's cool like I have something that everyone wants here in America that they don't have. Mm. Everyone here has had a UFC belt. Uh, well, not everyone, yeah, but yeah, yeah. a lot of Americans have had a UFC belt. No one has had this belt. There's only been two other people, and technic are well, you 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 being the one of them. But Dan Henderson was the only other American that won it while they were uh, titled under Japan. Well, before before you, maybe your time, maybe Mark Mark Coleman and stuff like that. I don't think he ever won the the. He, he won a tournament belt. Uh, just the tournament, but it wasn't the actual oh, weight class oh, belt oh, because yeah. Dan pre belt. Yeah, pre -belt. That so, don't count. so Dan yeah. Henderson was the only one to hold the light oh, heavyweight title, okay, and saying. then the, and then he won the what heavyweight title uh, against Wanderlei uh, right after that. So yeah, he it's like eighty five and two hundred five. Oh, the eighty. There you go. Yeah, eighty five yeah. and two hundred five. So but yeah. it wasn't. It was they were going kilos. Yeah, so yeah, different kilos. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm looking to do, man. I'm looking to get, actually capture the 145 title, and and it's already written. I grew up wrestling with Dan Henderson. Funny enough, right? Like, but his dad was my dad's high school coach. Well, that's he was crazy. my Junior high PE t teacher. He was so, just here not too long ago. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this episode's gonna be crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I, cool. I want to thank you for making time to come and you know sitting down with me and Barry. Yeah, heck yeah. It was good. It was fun and yeah. bring back some of some old funny. Um, Memories of the, my last training camp. Yeah, that was fun. But we ain't gonna talk about that shit no more. Hey, you know that was a hard training camp. <laughs> and I don't, you know, don't want to talk about that shit no more. Yeah. Fuck that. I want. Hey. I want. I want a new training camp. New memories. Me boxing. Me being victorious is knocking somebody's head off. Now yeah. that I'm all healthy and and. Yeah. Everything. Well, I get to do that first. I get to do that when you're gonna be there front seat. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I get to pay homage to you. Hey, you gonna give me some front row seats or what? Yeah, hell yeah. The last time I watched Saki the fight, Kibara, I was in the you better you better get my boy Rampage those front seats. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was in a nosebleed last time I saw you yeah. out there fighting. Yeah. All right, yeah. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure y'all follow my brother Juan on all his social medias. He put it down there, 
And you got to respect, he's the first American risen champion on U.S. soil. You know, that's that's uh, that's really tough to get, man. That was that was a big that's a big accomplishment. Much love. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank I appreciate you. it. Thank mm -hmm. you, Bear. We Absolutely. Out. We out. Yeah.